Hi everybody. Uh, okay, so we are going to continue on talking about the destination and some important models that are related to um, how we discuss the destination. So we've already talked about leap years tourism system, uh, which of course has the three parts, the generating region, the transit route region, and the destination region. Uh, we've also talked about the destination mix. And then here are two other um, concepts that you need to be familiar with. And they do actually relate back to one another and to what we've already discussed with regard to the destination. So this is what we call Butler's life cycle of a tourism destination area. And there's a lot going on here, a lot of different um, words. Okay, so for right now, let's just go ahead. We'll not worry so much about this bottom here. Now, drifters, explorers, mass tourists, um, both individual and organized, those will be discussed in some of your readings. So that will clear that up. And then the words right here in red, uh, euphoria, apathy, annoyance, and um, antagonism, those are actually part of Doxy's Iridex. So let's ignore those for now. For now. Okay, so this is what happens is um, we have a destination begin to form. And um, when it first starts to form, you don't have a lot of people coming. Okay, so that's why we say, okay, we've got the drifters that are coming during this exploration phase. The destination is not really well developed at that point. There's probably very few, um, in terms of the destination mix, there may be very few attractions or events, um, rather limited um, facilities, infrastructure in place at that point in time. Um, so it's really the people who are just really excited to try someplace new, and they're not really fussed with the fact that there's not a lot in place. So things start to continue on and the destination develops a little bit more. And so we get into this development phase and as development continues to occur along this, time, this, this timeline, um, the destination has more attractions to bring people in. It has more facilities to make them comfortable. Infrastructure is, is more developed. And we start to get the locals more and more involved. And again, we're gonna hold off on talking about that for right now. But yeah, so the, the destination continues to develop, it continues to develop until it hits this point right here. And that's what we call, um, I mentioned carrying capacity in your previous lecture. So carrying capacity is when a destination gets to a point where they are really at the maximum amount of people that they can comfortably hold. Okay, so think about, you know, a classroom. Typically you go into a classroom and there's whatever, 300 seats. And so we can only put 300 students in that class. We cannot put 301 students in that class because that means it's a violation of fire code. Somebody would have to sit on the floor. That's just not acceptable. So that classroom has um, exceeded carrying capacity. And so the class would have to be moved to another location. So same thing with a destination. So a, a destination, they can only hold the amount of people that they have hotel rooms for, that the um, airlines um, and airport can accommodate, that sort of thing. So once that carrying capacity is hit, and again, this is not happening overnight. I mean, we're talking about years and years and years for a destination to go from exploration through development and then hitting this carrying capacity um, you know, point right here. Um, and a lot of places never actually hit carrying capacity. But think about your really large destinations. London, New York, Tokyo, these are all locations they have a limited amount of space. That's why they build up instead of out. Um, and so every time these, these destinations really have hit the number of people that they can accommodate, and it's really a struggle for them to try to accommodate more. But what happens is when a destination hits this carrying capacity, there's a couple of different ways that they can continue to progress. Okay, so either they, they kind of consolidate what it is that they have and they continue on this path and um, things just kind of operate, um, you know, relatively well and they either continue on and they continue into what we call maintenance. So basically they decide, okay, we're not gonna accommodate any more people. We're not gonna build any more hotels. We are just going to maintain this level of customers, of guests, and continue on this path. Some um, destinations will try to um, continue on this trajectory and actually it will result in declining. 
Okay, and this particularly, we're going to talk a little bit more about over tourism. Um, this often happens when we have destinations that have too many people coming in. They can't accommodate all of these people. When the tourists greatly outnumber the locals, that is when this decline starts to happen. And um, again, we'll talk about this antagonism in a little bit, but basically the locals tend to get really angry um, and upset because the tourists are now encroaching on their lifestyle. And so the destination tends to do what we call decline. Alternatively, so um, now we have the destination. They realize that they've got kind of too many people. They need to figure out what they can do um, to keep everybody happy, the tourists, the locals, everyone. And so they work towards what we call rejuvenation. So in that case, they may be um, putting new policies in place. They may be extending the area of the destination out. They may be um, doing more renovations to make sure that everybody's comfortable. But this is really what we need to be thinking about with regard to um, destination development. Now, it's interesting because a lot of people think about destinations and they think, oh, well, every destination that, uh, that we've got now, they're all very well developed. Yeah, that's not entirely true, okay? Um, so I was about your age when uh, Dubai looked like this. <laughs> um, and now, of course, Dubai looks like this. So um, it's hard to believe that Dubai, you know, when I was uh, just about your age, just, just entering uni, um, was nothing but a, a spit of sand, okay? And there really wasn't a whole lot in there. And over about 20, 25 years, it developed and it went into this massive development. And now look at, at everything that's going on there. And it's, um, you know, continuing to develop even more. So yes, there definitely are um, destinations that are developing. There are destinations that are constantly, you know, trying to make changes, rejuvenate. There are destinations that are going into decline. We'll talk about those in a few minutes. Um, but I wanted to bring up this Doxy's Iridex, and Doxy's Iridex, what that is, is it really has to do with the um, way that the residents react to tourism, okay? So Doxy's Iridex is the irritation level that residents have towards tourists, okay? So let's get into it. So at the very beginning of the tourism life cycle, we have people are very euphoric. They're very excited, okay? And I like to think of the movie Cars when, um, you know, these two cars are coming into this old town um, and everybody gets excited and goes, oh my goodness, we're getting, we're getting visitors, yay! And they're so excited to see these cars because they have so few visitors coming. And that is why the way it happens with a new destination or a destination that's trying to do Help. The locals are not used to seeing a ton of people. Um, there are very few tourists, and so they're very euphoric. They're very excited, very happy to see tourists coming in. Well, after a while, you know, development continues to occur, and people get used to having tourists around. Um, and so this is when we have a pretty well developed, um, you know, now, now Vegas is, I like to use Vegas as the, the apathy um, example. And the reason is in Vegas, everybody knows that essentially Vegas would not exist if it were not for the fact that they have tourists. So they're used to tourists. They do not go out of their way to interact with tourists unless they are working in a hotel or one of the other tourism areas in Vegas. But they're used to the tourists being there. It's kind of like we as residents, we're not going to go out of our way to talk to you. If you ask us a question, we'll be nice and we'll answer it. But we really, we don't really want a whole lot to do with you. Like we'll stay, us as residents, we'll stay over here in our residence area. You stay in the tourist area and we'll all be happy operating that way. And that's kind of the best way to have a destination um, where, you know, the tourists and the residents kind of do their own thing. Because if a, um, if a uh, tourist destination develops too much too quickly, um, people can start to get really annoyed with um, the tourists that are coming in, okay? And uh, the idea is, um, you know, I found this um, Twitter of somebody saying, oh my goodness, do you ever wonder how many tourist photos you're in the background of? Um, because there's so many tourists around. And so they just kind of get annoyed with the tourists. They don't really want them there. Um, this typically happens in destinations that aren't there specifically for tourism, but tourists start to, um, you know, really come en masse. And we want to really stop this issue before it gets to, to be bad. And so that's when we have antagonism. And that is when people, the, the residents, just lash out at the tourists and do not want them there anymore.
So this was a picture that was taken um, on one of the beaches in Spain uh, where it was just totally overrun with tourists. And as you can see, there was some graffiti there by the residents saying, um, tourists, your luxury trip is my daily misery because you are just um, destroying our way of life. So over tourism has really been an issue um, in lots of different places. Um, here is a list of the, the top seven European cities that are considered over toured because they're so overcrowded. As you can see, all of these cities do have a lot of residents. Um, however, you can see that essentially they have, they'll have more tourists than they have residents. And that is when this antagonism um, tends to occur is when you have tourists that outnumber the amount of residents, and so they end up really impacting the residents and their daily lives. So I've put up a, um, uh, a video for you called Crowded Out. It's an excellent video on over-tourism. Over-tourism is becoming more and more of an issue in um, the tourist industry itself, and certainly something that a lot of destinations are dealing with. A lot of destinations cannot comfortably survive without tourism, but when it comes to impacting the daily lives of residents, that really becomes an issue. So make sure you take a, a look at that because over tourism is something that you are going to hear constantly throughout your career. It's really something that's here to stay and something that a lot of destinations are trying to um, take into consideration and figure out what they can do to mitigate those challenges.